I'm fine, thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear, Jen. Uh, so, Jen Dobson, you are a teacher trainer. I, sound, I feel like I'm a mastermind. <laughs> you are a teacher trainer, consultant, international speaker, and an award-winning ELT author. Um, and you've recently got a publication out for, um, it's a pre-primary course for, in Spain by OUP called Archie's World. Yes? That's correct. And Archie's like, is he like a giraffe or something? That's true, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah well, thank you very much for um, inviting me here, thank which is lovely. Thank you for being here. And I know it's so late in the day, but um, I, I know you've been here for a few hours watching us already. So I hope you've been enjoying it, Jen. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, Last time I saw Glenn, actually that's not true, last time I saw Glenn was on a rehearsal. Yeah, yes. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the time before was in a cave um, in Belfast. In Belfast, that was last year in November, when we could meet face to face yeah. at our International House YL conference. Yes, I forgot about that. It was an artificial cave. That's um, right. <laughs> that was, sort of, was it some sort of like, um, how would you describe it, some sort of centre for extreme sports and things like that? It was an activity Yeah, yeah, it was, it was an activity centre. It. it was really good, really good, yeah. Did, did you jump? jump? No, did you jump? Yeah. No way, yeah. I, I watched. There was this big town, <laughs> people jumped off it. No, I, I just went into the cave. I thought that was better. <laughs> anyway, Jen, um, over to you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll share my screen now. Um, here we go. I think, yep, we'll just, I think hopefully we can uh, just take this into, there we go. Let me just see if I can get the chat up as well. Please do um, type in the chat. Uh, there we go, lovely. And um, please do put any questions in the question and answer for me. Um, so, ah, uh, what um here's my um i'm experimenting today with a little bit of a different presentation um so let's hope it all goes all right um at the, in the yellow box here you'll see my twitter handle if anyone would like to send me a message at some point and also we have a qr code there which um if someone would like to test that out for me i think i've made it public which would be uh, the point of it. Um, so on, on that QR card, you'll have all the links for today um, handily put in a Padlet in theory. Um, so today we are talking about, I haven't got that long, so it can be a bit quick. Um, top 10 tips for a successful early years class. So let's go. Right. So here's my first of my little poems. If you chose your best tips from one to 10 for early years, safety, organization, and fun. Oh, sorry. If you chose your best tips from 10 to one for early years, safety, organization, and fun for success again and again, what would you include, or again and again, if I do my uh, more Northern accent, what would you include in your top 10? So if anyone would like to chat, type in the chat box, please. Oh, lovely, Kate, thank you. Oh, the QR code works, Rob, thank you. Good, good. Routines, routines, okay. A virtual hug, oh, is that, is that for one of the top 10 things? That would be nice. Okay, so what have we got? Top 10, we've got routines, routines. Any more in the chat box, please, for your top? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and what is number 10? I shall smile. Number 10 is routines. So we've got that very quickly. Laughter, that's a great one. Routines reassure. So my question to you here is, Oh, sorry, um, the early years, I'm talking from three to five, really. Um, right, so if we look at the closed park there, um, 
coronavirus, um, I believe um, we're, on, we're going into, a, might be going into a second lockdown here. But I think it was fairly unanimous that during the first lockdown, people found it very difficult to concentrate. I mean, there's a lot going on. And I think one of the things that made it so difficult to concentrate was our lack of routines. Our routines were suddenly thrown into complete chaos. And, and so I think it, this, this comparison, we can understand how important it is for the children to have those routines to help us focus. Um, which is why I've got this little picture here of the child focusing with, with their hands doing the bricks because I think we need the stability. The younger the child, the more we need the routine. Some of these little children, the three-year-olds, their routine there is really getting up in the morning. Their mother gives them, their, you know, or their father or their, their caregiver will give them their their, their food, their, their, and they're really dependent on the routines that we set for them. So if we're in a class, it's really important to establish these routines. Um, and for example, if you look at the, the picture here um, with the signposting, I mean, I think we'll also note, realize the importance of signposting. So, if you have, for example, a poster in class, um, you can point to these things to signpost very clearly the, the different routines. Um, for example, hello, tidy up, goodbye, um, how the children are feeling. Um, so I'm going to give you what, or we often use routine songs as well to focus that. So, these are what I would tend to say a fairly basic um, pre-primary routine is how you would get into the class. So particularly with, with, with um, the restrictions of social distancing, um, this becomes more and more important. Getting on with the class, so a general class would follow this if you would see this set up TPR routines, some kind of puppet work, some new input, some movement games, circle time some kind of table time where we're doing some craft or, or pencil activities. Tidy up time, um, which is an essential part of collaborating um, and getting out of the class. So um, that would be a basic routine that I would expect to see in most pre-primary classes. And I think as you get older, you, you think the routines become boring, but with pre-primary um, students, um, early years or very young learners, they're sometimes called, it's essential that they, it helps them with their concentration. So, and this little sign here, I'm going to show you some little online ideas. So if you're taking it online, we really need the help of the family. And I think it's more important than ever that these these established routines continue and we can use the songs and the same visual clues for example show a picture each time you're moving on a tidy up picture um, a song picture use these visual clues to signpost the transition so that's number 10 moving on to number nine any guesses any guesses for number nine? Well, I shall show you what I have for number nine. The whole child. If you have a look at this picture, I know Carol talked about this this morning. It's so important. If you look at this picture here, what are these children doing, do you think? Can you type in the chat box, please, what they're doing? Thank you, Tiana. <laughs> Oh, there's Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Thank you. Experience playing. Um, I think the important thing is there. there um, there's an article written about this for um, 
they're experiencing, they're learning. Imagine the, the sound of the water, how they're collaborating with each other, the feeling of, of the, the sand under their feet. They might be a little bit frightened of the waves. Some of them might really like it. They might be feeling a bit splashed. Someone might be afraid of getting sand in their eyes. Their experience, they're learning. And they're learning, children learn the whole child through all their senses. And when we're planning our activities, we need to include this as much as possible. There's a little quote there for you. Teresa, uh, Teresa Fleta, um, I'm going to refer to um, a few times during um, this session, but all of us are different, each child is different, and we need to be aware of that, particularly in young, very young learner classes. Um, James Soft Skills, James Heckman, um, James Heckman is very important in, um, he was a friend of Obama and um, he won a Nobel Prize for his work with, with um, pre-primary children because his importance of talks about the importance of character as opposed to cognitive skills, the importance of character skills um, as an ingredient for success. And he talks about the soft skills here as these that you can read there. So motivation, attention, sociability, self-regulation. So these are the um, emotional skills, social and emotional skills, self-esteem and ability to defer gratification. He says they're important for our health and mental health. Um, and the important thing is here is they can be measured and they can be improved, um, which is very important, especially in these zero to five years. So he talks about the importance of early childhood education in um, character and soft skills. So how would that be important online? The important line is, is to make sure online and in our classes, we, we create moments that involve the whole, whole child. Perhaps when we're in the classroom, we can see this um, physically. Um, so when we're online, we just need to be a little bit more conscious of that in our planning, I think. So moving on to number eight, I'm going to check time here. Oh, okay. Moving on to number eight. Um, oracy, enhance oracy. What is oracy? Here's a definition. So it's really about how to express yourself in a language. So it's about literacy. It's joining literacy and numeracy. So the idea is it's do the importance of oral, oral skills in education. And here's Teresa again. So really what we're talking about with oracy is again using the whole about the whole child, increasing reception and production. So how do we do that? Well, we need to think about the silent period. Crash and talks about the silent period that children may, may, may not want to say anything early on. And we may, it, perhaps it's often, um, it's about February in, in a class that they actually begin to start producing suddenly the language. Um, so not to force them too much, Let, let's accept that. And I think another thing with um, pre-primary is that we will be use, using the family language or L1 or the first, the first language. Um, I think the idea of the communicative approach um, is probably why the insistence of L1, L1 only, but children need to be able to communicate with us. Um, so. Often we have um, things like circle time where we can um, encourage them to speak in their own language and we can translate briefly. Um, thank you about the images my daughter did though. She does quite a lot of my artwork for me. So I think a change of uh, track. Um, and the, um, 
the home language we are going to need to use it. Also, the importance of lots of TPR, lots of songs, so that the um, the input in the language is going in, um, which um, so we're building in the movements, um, which help for expression at the circle time I've mentioned and monitoring, for example, online um, to instead of very clearly asking the turn which child to speak with turn taking and online. We're going to need to model model the TPR very clearly and encourage them to join in physically, even if they don't if we're respecting the silent period, um, they can at their actions. They can join in the action. So that was number eight, I believe. And I think this is number seven, promote projects. So here you'll see the importance of tourists again. So as we're using the whole child, the whole child, um, we need to include, for example, to learn pre-literacy skills, they're going to need um, fine motor skills. Um, they're not going to be able to write until they can um, until they can have this dexterity in their, their finger strength. So all these activities are projects, um, aside from using collaboration, um, helping the oracy, they're also helping pre-literacy with the scissor skills, with the pencil activities, and while internalizing the language. It's a little summary there. And online, once again, here I would say plan building up for small projects during the language, with the language you've been teaching. And you're gonna to need to work with the family to discuss, if you're going to do bits of the project, little by little, which what I would tend to do in class, you're probably gonna to need to talk to the family about how you're gonna share a little area, maybe in a box where you could begin to take out and build on the, the, um, the project in process. So that was number, I think we're now to number six. Um, this is about the importance of the communication triangle. This is more and more important if you go online um, because of this, um, Gail Ellis talks about this. Um, we're talking about the triangle of the school, the child and the home or the teacher, the child and the family member. Um, so here, for example, um, this again is in your set of links. Um, this is um, a free in the middle. Sorry, you can't see my pointer. Um, the, the parents caregivers. This is a free booklet, which in the remote teaching learning experience um, gives ways of how can, you can encourage this triangle. That's a lovely publication with some great ideas. That's once again, here is the QR code to the Padlet with all the links. So here, for example, um, in the top left corner, I'm showing the um, through a communication platform, we can share work done in the classroom so that the family can see what we do in class. Um, on the top right, we can show, for example, here, the teacher might be at home and can still communicate through this platform. Um, here, for example, we've got a picture of another puppet. Um, this also has a trans, this is class dojo, which has a translation element if you don't speak the home language, so the family could translate. Um, so online, you need to find a safe platform and establish codes of conduct and sh to share the methodology with the family. So that's going to lead us into number five, which is about technology and fears. I love using technology, but I think we do need to be aware of the dangers of it. Um, I'm going to put those figures up for you, for you to read. These are some of the dangers with the very young learners. This is from, um, again, in the links. Perhaps you could read that. I keep this date is 2015 and it is from the UK, but I think it's frightening. Um, two thirds of identity theft by 2030 will basically have been 
because of parents sharing um, uh, um, their photos of their children through social media. Because all you really need is the date of birth, the, sorry, the date of birth, the address, um, and, oh, what's the other, sorry, I can't remember, the date of birth, the address, and one other piece of information, which I've completely escaped me for the moment, um, the name of the child, um, to possibly, so if you put a child's birthday online, then we know what the date of birth is. Um, also, data theft is a big worry at this age. Um, cl class dojo, this is really the behavioural, the behaviour side to it. I think if you use the platform just to share photos, um, then then you you that's a different kind of that data wouldn't be shared. Um, voice act activated speakers and connective toys is another big danger. Um, another problem is facial recognition software. So if you're f putting photos of children online, um, this is another worry. Um, so here, for example, I've shown a picture of exemplifying perhaps, there's another article in the IATEFL Young Learners um, website. There's an article I've written about how to avoid um, sharing photos of young learners online, but to use, um, show photos of their work, for example, instead. Um, so I believe there should be another interactive thing somewhere here. Ah, here. So online, um, oh, hybrid classes. I would be, I think we need to be very aware of for example, here we've got my photo on the video at the moment. Um, if you take that photo and then put it on social media, I think that you need to have a co code of conduct that nobody would do that with children. So you'd need to establish this relationship with, with the family if you're going to have them on, and that sh should be in the code of conduct that you, that you would share. Um, Another big worry for me at the moment is if schools are going to go hybrid, if you are going to have um, people in the classrooms, then the cameras I would direct to the teacher, not to the children, unless you really, I think these things need to be worked out very carefully. Um, these are my personal opinions. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm reading some. Please do type in the chat box on type me some questions to quest, um, Q and A at the end if we have ta if we have time. Um, Martina has asked a question in the in the chat box. Um, I think it's the behavioural the behaviour side um, which which um, is the is that if you're using that side of it that's what that's the data that that people are looking for it's how people react to um is, is what the educational um people who collect educational data are interested in right moving on thanks rob um the release form yeah exactly so that should be in the um in your policies stimulate with stories um I'm having to juggle a little bit with the um, panel here of my, <laughs> because of the way I put my interactive things, I must remember next time. Um, stories, so I've got different types of stories. You may have your, um, the stories that you use in your class. Um, you may have, what I'm gonna try to show you here is, um, or you may want to use um, picture books, um, I use a lot of picture books in class and what you, these stories, um, we're trying to use the small details in the artwork. So if you look at the picture on the top right, I think one of the problems with um, ELT, they didn't appreciate much the minor literacy um, details like, can you see the little astronaut hidden up in the, in the attic there? So trying to introduce small visual liter literacy details to help um, will help with their literacy skills. And onomatic words, for example, up, up, up. And if you're telling the story, use lots of those 
um, try and tell the stories in ways that, that with um, changing your voice and creating suspense, etc. Um, these obviously using books will give this natural progression that you use the covers, the beginning, middle, ends, um, the identify with the characters. So you stimulate with your stories, um, and the uh, the stories will have things like um, we encourage them to work on values and inclusion and awareness of other countries. So cultures. So we're broadening out the, um, our experience. Online, um, we tend to I say this, we, uh, we divide the activities into pre, during and post. So that's quite a clear way. So use the front of the books to um, predict. During, um, it, it ask what's happening using their first language if needed. And post, for example, here you could, you see, you might have an activity based on the story and then you can use that. Here they're making a whistle, which I thought was a stroke of genius of mine, where they um, have a whistle that doesn't make a noise, they just pretend to blow it. And then when they go through the story, this is for a um, train, um, train driver story. When they go to the story, then they can, um, in a second telling, they can pretend to blow their whistles, etc. So online, try to repeat the same things. Pep Elt, um, they, is, um, there's a link to that where they show how to use picture books. And also I'd say um, there's lots of storytelling videos you can see of the picture books um, of people telling their stories that you can use online. And we're at number four. So number three, let me check my watch. Oh, number three. Um, number three, puppets are pals. Never underestimate the importance of a puppet at pre-primary. Um, I showed you before the puppet, um, they feel real identification with the puppets at this age. Um, oh. I'm just going to try and add something to the chat box. I hope, um, yeah. So, yeah, so you, um, so the, that's that's actually um, that's actually why I put um, the mouse there, Lucy, because just because it's a really cute picture. Um, so, for example, you can be away and you can show show the puppets. Um, you can show them what the puppet's doing um, to your class if you go away for the weekend. Um, for example, you can put them with props for the story. Um, you can use them, for example, here we've got the, pu the puppet dressed um, for Christmas to introduce Christmas things. And I broke my um, wrist at one point and this was a way of explaining, um, explaining it to the children in my class why I wasn't there. Um, so they understand the, the experience at this age, the experience, I'm putting it um, animism, the experience, and this is not spelled correctly, um, the experience, a thing called animism, which they believe that the puppet actually has life. So do use the puppet because it's, it's, um, it's amazing. The one here, top, this top um, one is Archie, a friend, my daughter actually was in a completely different town and saw a child with with Archie um, going to a wedding. Um, so that just shows you the importance. Um, that it actually it looks huge, um, but I think the child is very, very small. So um, it shows you the importance that these, these characters have for the children. Um, uh, if you know just this child wants to take it to a wedding and also online um, if you've got your puppet at home take um, try and get your puppet home because it's so important and it really will um, to find more props and other pals um, to introduce to the puppet and it will help them, the children will talk to it, it will help their social and emotional skills and um, 
and um, they will, if they're upset, they can talk to the talk to the puppet. And they really will. The puppet helps um, them feel a lot more secure. So now we're going down to number two. Number two, I really love this quote. Um, so play is the work of the child. Um, so for example, in these pictures, whether it's using, um, using um, stickers that we're using in the class um, or taking in, for example, realia, um, we've all, for them to play with, there's lots of different types of play. I'm going to let you read the types of play there. Oops, sorry. <laughs> So you can see, consider the different different types of play. Um, I think it's worth worth having a look at them, so that you you can try and include all these different types within our classroom. And if we look at the um, online, really show and tell is a is a great thing. The fact that the children have all these all these things at home that they can bring them and and show them to us and they are readily available in the house they can show us their toys so another quick watch check um so now we've can you remember so little quiz here you can type in the chat box, number 10, and pets, yes. <laughs> yes, so the pets, we don't bring, well, I used to have children who brought, used to bring silkworms into class. I think we've had a tortoise. Um, yeah, they bring like, all these things they bring into class. So number 10, can you remember what that was? Number 10 was? And number nine. Yep. And number eight. And number seven. And six. Yeah, Ricky's really on the ball here. And five. Oops. <laughs> and yeah, this one, I actually started to write um, a, a talk called Tech No Fears. Um, which is not, uh, for the ITA for young learners once, and it ended up. I ended up changing it during the middle to be techno fears. I, I love using technology with with um, youngers, but I actually, I sort of changed it while I was writing it. Um, there's there's um, if you're interested in that, there's quite a lot of information again on the Padlet. So number four, stimulate the stories. That's correct. Uh, number three, puppets are paddles, yes. And number two, so those are our number one. What do you think number one will be? I think we've covered more or less everything. Any ideas? I think that's a nice idea, Martina. I, th I think we should have done that really just through through all the the puppet. I think is key to building rapport, actually, um, almost more than the almost more than the adult. I think um, I think the the puppet is what really will is 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 your pal, probably more than the teacher. So um, thank you for putting that. Thank you for adding that because it really the puppet is is an essential part of the 
pre primary teacher yeah a teddy bear if you haven't got a puppet find one make one um the one thing that yeah I, that they're not great trying to pretend do puppet work in teacher training because uh, you feel a bit silly okay so number one is right routines so i'm cheating there because um i've gone back two routines because I think it's so important. I think if you don't have the routines, really you don't have a class because you need that structure to get going. So this is the importance of the routines. You know, they'll understand each, each other. They'll understand the diversity in the different groups. Um, if you don't have the security and the safety that the child, I don't think they can focus. So I think we're going back to the beginning. And also I, we've gone through this top 10. I don't think there's any particular order for the 10, but you, what it did help is you know that there's a structure, don't you, to, to you know, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. We, you know that this is going to um, reach its conclusion. Um, it, it helps us it helps us time ourselves as well. It, it gives us security and it, it gives us, it's a signpost in itself, the routine. And it provides the security, safety, so that the child can focus and do their own research because play is the highest form of research. So finish with Einstein and Another rhyme. So let's see if I can say this. That's my top 10. I don't know if you'll agree, but I do hope you'll have some new ideas for teaching pre-primary. So thank you very much. There's um, the QR code again in case you forgot it before. And this is the kind of thing I do like doing with, I'll just show you that again, do like doing with tech. And thank you very much. I shall stop sharing my screen. And we'll go back to here we are. Um, thank you very much, Jen. All right, that Timing, was, two minutes. Yeah, bang on. <laughs> Thank you. I did say you, you, you did have a few minutes extra because we started a little bit late, but uh, no, I mean, we have got a little bit of time if anybody does want to ask some questions. I don't know, have you seen the two questions in the Q&A box, Jen? I'm just looking for them. Um, Paula, yes, I've got them. Um, oh, Kate, sorry, can I start with Kate? Yes. Um, oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Oh, I, I, actually, I think I might have to finish with that. Sorry. Um, there's two lovely questions here. I don't know if people can see them. I'll read them out. Um, but would you like to read them out, Glenn, so we've got a different voice? Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, so, Paula, is how much time would you spend on colouring in a 30-minute class? 30-minute class? Yeah. Um, well, I think... It, well, it's not very long, the 30-minute class, is it? I mean, I'm, I would go to the routine as well. You're probably going to... Um, I think it dep depends on the... If you're building up to a project, um, I, think, I think you judge, judge the, the, the children mm -hmm. um, and based on, on how they were feeling, the kind of day. I, um, you, might want, you might want to spend five minutes on it. I think the important thing is, is the internalizing in it. I think not just coloring as well. I think it's fine motor skills. So maybe with a bit of um, plasticine or a little bit of cutting, um, tearing. So I think those are strengthening the fingers. Um, so not just coloring, I would say. Okay. Um, it depends on the children and, and the activity and if, if you're building up to a project. But you're right. I mean, 30 minutes is not that long. And the last one, Kate says, um, and to what age is it? Is it animism important? When do they stop believing? Well, I, I think we're really talking about, um, we're talking about Father Christmas, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> In a way, you know? Um, 
I mean, I remember with my daughter, I mean, you know, used to show pictures of the, um, of the books and, and they would talk to the characters. Literally, she would actually talk to the characters. Yeah, seven, eight, you, you know, I think it depends on the extent. Puppets, I think, work maximum, maximum seven, but I wouldn't really, at that stage, they're not really, and, and the, the, they're not really getting it. It also depends on the different, um, different children, mental, you know, how they, how their cognitive, they might still want to believe seven, eight. I, I would say pre, pre-primary, I would say animism works up to, to most of pre-primary and the, the top five-year-olds are beginning to They'll sometimes say, I can see your mouth moving. <laughs> but, um, but before that, even though they can see your mouth, um, yeah. yeah, they want to be, yeah, they want to believe for longer, but um, yeah, lovely, yeah, but um, yeah, okay. innocence, That's isn't it? Believe for longer, absolutely. Exactly what you just said, they want to believe for longer, of course. Okay, well, Jen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye.